Some of you might be familiar with this book. It's one of the greatest manuals ever written. Street Sword, Practical Use of the Long Blade for Self-Defense. A book all about how to use the greatest weapon ever crafted by human hands. The Katana. You see, when sitting at home or when out and about, you never know when you might be set upon by those who wish you harm. Muggers, gangs of ninjas, ex-girlfriends, process servers, the list is endless. And in just about all of those scenarios, a katana is the best thing to have on hand. It's easy to hide, it's deadly to all of but the most skilled warriors, and being seen with one will grant you great honor and respect. See, if people see a man with a katana walking around, they instantly assume he knows exactly what he's doing. And even if it's illegal in your area, no one's gonna stop you. You have a katana. Now, the katana is a very deadly tool. Not just anyone can use it, which is exactly why Phil Elmore Sensei wrote this book. A man who, by all appearances, has eaten more pussy than Alf. This is a very, very rare tome. Only the most dedicated of Elmore Sensei's followers get a copy at all. It took me almost a year to get this one. And today I'm going to take you through some, not all, but some of the knowledge contained in these pages. But be warned, once you set off on this path, there's no going back. The only way out of hell is through it. So if you're going to continue watching this video, or, heavens forbid, you get a hold of Street Sword, practical use of the long blade for self-defense, then, well, you'd best be prepared to keep going forever. Time to get started. But before that, we need to dress the part. First, we need some banging glasses. Check. Then we need a badass trench coat. Check. Then we need a sick scarf. Check. Then we need some fancy gloves. Check. And finally, we need a katana. Check. Now, you may notice this isn't a real katana. This one's made of wood. My gaijin hands are not worthy of touching one made of proper Nippon steel. And if you're wondering, James, why are you calling yourself a gaijin? Isn't your grandmother Japanese? Shut up. Now, let's get started. I can't really snap with gloves on, just, just go. Now, a sword may seem less useful than a gun in most combat scenarios, but as Elmore Sensei points out, if you are unable or unwilling to own a gun, then a sword is your best chance. And even if you do have a gun, a sword works great as a backup, or if you run out of bullets. And of course, if you wind up against a master swordsman, you can't shoot them. Only a blade can take them down. With bullets, they'll just dodge or deflect anything you throw their way. So it's best to have at least a passing knowledge of the basics of how to use the blade. Let's go over some basics. How to grip the sword. First, take your dominant hand, which will be your right hand, and hold it near the top of the hilt. Then, take your non-dominant hand, your left hand, and hold it near the bottom of the hilt. This is how you grip the sword. If you're left-handed, go fuck yourself. Now that you know how to grip the sword, you need to know how to attack with it. The overhand strike is simple. Simply grip the sword, as we discussed earlier, then hold it like a baseball bat, and swing downwards at a diagonal angle, as if you're painting a line from his ear down to his knee. If you're an anime fan, you should recognize this as the most basic strike used by most swordsmen. Once you've mastered it, you'll be able to cut through their bone, their muscles, their organs, and everything else with ease. You'll know you've done it correctly when their body releases a spray of pressurized blood 10 feet in the air. <laughs> if you swing your sword overhand and it gets caught on your opponent's bones, then you're either not swinging fast enough or you're not swinging with enough force. Just practice some more, you'll get it. 
Remember, human bones are pretty strong under normal circumstances, but they turn to cheese in the presence of the katana. Next is the underhand strike. This is useful for surprise attacks. First, hold the sword in a reverse grip, like so. It's similar to the grip we went over before, but now it's in reverse. Then you hold it down at your side, like this. And then you simply swing straight up. You can also swing diagonally if you'd prefer. The important part is that you pull your non-dominant hand back while you're attacking. Otherwise, you know, you'll cut yourself and you don't want that. At least I assume you don't. Much like the overhand strike, this should cut through bone, metal, other swords, stone, anything as long as you do it properly. Now for how to do thrusts. See, with western pig blades you can't cut through armor very well, so the only way to get through it is by stabbing, punching through it. However, glorious katana will cut through steel like cloth, meaning you don't need thrusts. Those are for barbarians. If I ever hear about any of you doing thrusts, I will know that your honor has been besmirched. And if I hear that your honor has been besmirched, I will restore it the only way it can be restored. By killing you. If you are, for whatever reason, unable to finish your opponents in a single attack, then you may have to wind up defending against one or more of their attacks. Now, the length of a duel varies greatly. It can be over in a single attack, or it can last as long as three or four episodes of back and forth. Whatever the case, you want to be versatile so you're ready for any and all situations. Now, the best defense is a good offense, meaning you just sort of whack and cut and attack, never thrust, at your opponent. And you always want to mirror your opponent. If they swing overhand, you swing underhand so that you can deflect. If they swing horizontal, you bring your blade vertical and bring it over to intercept. Remember, don't bother looking at your opponent's body while they're attacking. The sword is the dangerous thing. Keep your eye on that. If it seems to be moving too fast to keep track of, then get better. Now, when you're not in battle, your sword will be in one of two places. On your back, or at your hip. Wherever it is, when you pull it out, you want to strike at the same time. Never take too much time to pause and wonder what you're doing. Simply pull and swing. If you can't see your enemy, if they're out of reach, it doesn't matter. Just sort of swing in their general direction. Once you get really good, you don't even need to touch them with the blade to cut them. For example, if it's at your back, grab near the hilt with your dominant hand, which is your right hand, then pull and strike at them. Now, don't be afraid to turn your body away from your opponent as you strike. You don't need to watch them. It'll look really badass if you cut them in half and you're not even watching. Plus, if you don't look at them as they die, it'll intimidate any other potential foes. Now, drawing and attacking is known as Iaijutsu, and it's actually a pretty simple technique. You only need to practice five or six times. If you really want to master it though, you have to do it at least 10,000 times per day. After a few weeks of that, you should be at least passable. If you're an American, it's very easy to get a gun. It's much less easy to get a proper blade. It's easy to get a blade, but it's hard to get a proper blade. So if you ever find yourself in the middle of a battle, even if you don't have a gun on you, just search around, you can find one. Just look in the nearby bushes or an elementary school, you'll be bound to find something somewhere. And if it happens to be a handgun, you can dual wield a gun and a sword, like so. Yatta! Now you have range and power at the same time. The trick is to make sure that when one weapon is forward, the other is back. When you're swinging with the sword, your ha gun hand is back here. When you're firing the gun, the blade is safely out of the way. What? No, no, you're fine. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm filming a thing here. When you're firing the gun, the blade is back safely out of the way. Strike with the sword while the gun is back, then pull the gun forward and finish your opponent off with a single shot. That's really just double tapping though, because again, the katana is where the power is. You should always be aware not only of your target, but what's behind your target. If, for instance, you found your gun at an elementary school and you're firing at your assailant, be sure not to hit any small children. And if you do hit any small children, just say that Hamas was hiding behind them. People will stop asking questions after that. The gun is a useful weapon, but only in certain circumstances. Against a seasoned master, it's little more than a distraction. Remember, they will simply dodge or deflect anything you throw at them. 
That's what being a sword master means. The gun is for convenience. When you actually want to get the job done, you need the katana. Now that's about all I can cover in a single video. Be sure to rewatch this dozens of times and practice regularly. Thanks for watching and tune in next time for the exciting sequel, Flashlight Fighting, how to turn your pocket flashlight into a take anywhere self-defense weapon. That's all about how flashlights are actually better than knives if you know what you're doing. Goodbye. Aloha, everyone who's watched this far, you are all great. You see these names? Yeah, these are my patrons. If you want early access to my videos and you want to get your name here, as well as some other, you know, goodies, you could become a patron or become a YouTube channel member, whichever you want, you know, that works. Uh, special thanks to my $10 and up patrons who are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayen, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Jalal Dalul, James M., Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Michael and Katie Hake, Mistboy, Mitsimona, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Psych XS, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Toa Michael, Tesla Shark, Ve Victus, Vimek Zol, and Wesley. Thanks to everyone. And if you watched this far, or if you didn't watch this far, thanks to you as well. Please consider liking this video, commenting, and subscribing to my channel. Did you ever notice that when someone says, like the video, the like buttons get highlighted on YouTube. It's kind of cool. Anyways, goodbye.